will it be like, our world of tomorrow? Are we at last on the road to achieving a world of permanent peace, a new and better world, where all men will enjoy a greater measure of material and spiritual well-being than ever before? That is today's challenge to men of vision and courage. All over this land of ours, men of that caliber have turned their minds and their hands to the creation and production of countless new products and services, to great and far-reaching innovations that will affect profoundly the lives of people in all lands. No point on the Earth today is more than 60 flying hours away. The explosive speed of new transportation is shrinking our world in terms of time and distance, bringing all its peoples closer to each other. Super airliners are coming, gigantic in size, and equipped with every imaginable comfort and luxury. The helicopter and the light airplane forecast an era of personal transportation by air. Jet propulsion seems destined to give wings a speed that staggers the imagination. It could mean breakfast in New York and dinner in Buenos Aires. For earthbound transportation, we can foresee faster and more palatial steam and diesel-operated streamliners. Buses are sure to be of far greater speed, capacity, and comfort than anything we know today. The cars we drive now will be outmoded by new concepts of design, changed in appearance and vastly better in performance. Television has been perfected, and mass production and distribution of sets is close at hand. Research and experiment in the field of plastics have pointed the way to a host of unique materials, usable in thousands of different ways. Better housing for everyone is forecast by the development of prefabricated homes, moderate in cost and easily erected in a few hours instead of days and weeks. Milady's kitchen is sure to be a thing of beauty, replete with clever, labor-saving devices of all kinds. Great strides forward in the field of chemistry and medical science are sure to extend the lifespan of millions. All these startling wonders of a bright new world are fine to anticipate, but many of them will be as remote as the stars from a large share of the world's population. Isn't there something in store for them? They are the people whose jobs have not been mechanized. The millions who spend their days at hard manual labor, putting muscle power into back-breaking tasks, working desperately hard, and actually accomplishing little when measured in terms of time and effort. They are the people who depend on slow, plodding draft animals to ease the burden a little, but not enough to count for much in a world that puts a premium on faster, better methods. Our own farmer is a good example, the kind whose acres lie off the main roads. There are five and one half million such farmers in this country. And of these, more than four million have neither a truck nor a tractor. They use horses and mules to do their work. Hasn't the world of tomorrow anything to offer him? Is he destined, because of his limited income, to depend on his own hard physical exertions, plus the meager aid of draft animals in this expanding age of mechanization? What has long been needed is a single mechanized unit, economical to own and operate, and so versatile in its working capacity that it can serve in scores of different ways every day in the year. Despite our great automotive development, nobody has ever produced a power vehicle that was successful in solving that particular problem. Out of the cauldron of war has appeared the long-awaited solution. At long last, the answer has been found. It's the mighty Jeep, ready now to keep its rendezvous with the post-war world. And it is indeed a new and mightier Jeep in every way. An epoch-making development based on a new concept of rugged, versatile, mobile power engineered and built by Willis Overland to serve agriculture and industry all over the world in a thousand different ways. The war record of its prototype, the military jeep, 
is the saga of one of the most spectacular automotive fighting machines ever conceived. That story is known all over the world. The Jeep has played a brilliant part in every campaign, distinguished itself on every fighting front. Its name has found a place in every language. Its amazing wartime achievements are familiar to millions of people. Hundreds of thousands of Jeeps rolled up billions of miles in the toughest testing laboratory of all time. No vehicle ever was subjected to such diverse and violent uses. It's not surprising that the fighting men who drove it, who literally lived with it through months of bitter combat, were the first to realize that the great qualities that enabled the Jeep to do its war job so magnificently could be just as valuable for scores of peacetime occupations. Who are you writing to now, Joe? I'm writing a letter to Willis Overland. Oh. Who? You heard me, Willis Overland. People that make the Jeep. <laughs> What do you expect to do, trade this one in? Oh, be yourself, wise guy. I'm telling him what a swell job it is. You know, Ed, I'm mighty fond of this little buggy, and so are lots of other guys in this man's army. When I get back to the farm, I'm gonna have one of them. I can think of a lot of things this wagon can do around the farm. Yeah, maybe. I wouldn't know. It's out of my line. Hey, I'll bet my old man could use one around his mill. Oh, sure he could. Wherever there's pulling or pushing to do, this is the baby can do it. But on a farm, Boy, that's where it'll really fit in. Letters like Joe's mounted into the thousands. Soldiers from the farm and city alike putting into writing their post-war dreams to own a Jeep and put it to work. <laughs>